A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Video. Pretty spooky weather out there today. It's, it's thunder rolling down the hill. Ah, lightning. I can see a blitzen from far away. Ah, goodness. Really, really spooky. And we are going to do something equally spooky today. We are going to find an exact solution to the sign of one degree. And since we are going to propose something spooky today, the proposed solution to this problem is going to be one degree by the fundamental theorem of engineering. And I thank you guys for watching. And if you did enjoy today's problem, I invite you to check out today's sponsor Brilliant, who were kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. Obviously, it's not just one degree. I mean, one degree is really small. Basically, I'm really small. So yeah, it's, it's, it's Kind of, it's kind of okay, but we are going to do it the nice way. And for this, we are going to do the Euler expansion of the sign. Okay, after rewriting the one degree into, uh, I mean, no one wants degrees. We want radians, red gang. We are the red gang here because we are very, very red guys. Do you guys still say red for the German word geil? I don't know. Never mind. Let us rewrite the sign of one degree at first and then we are going to continue from this point onwards. So one degree is the same as saying, okay, pa is equal to 180 degrees basically, meaning one degree is nothing other than pa divided by 180. Okay, this is good. So we got this out of the way, now we are um, in the red gang territory. And what we are going to do now is we are going to take a look at the Euler expansion of the sign. If you don't know what this is, um, take a look at a few links in the description, there you can find a bit more information on that. Basically what we are going to do is we are going to write this right here as being the odd part of the complex exponential function. Namely, this is going to be equated to e to the i times the argument, so pa over 180, minus e to the negative i, pa divided by 180, and all of this divided by 2i. Yeah, this right here is the Euler expansion, and it's actually pretty useful because we can use a few arguments in the complex plane on a few branches to um, rewrite this a tiny little bit. And what I'm going to do at first is I'm going to extract an e to the r power of a 2 from this whole thing. This makes sense in the sense that we can extract an i from this whole thing. So we are going to rewrite this first complex exponential function as being e to the r power of a 2. And all of this to the, okay, if we exponentiate this whole thing again, if we were to write everything out, we are going to multiply it to the original exponent that we got here. So meaning we are going to need a 1 over 90 on the outside. And all of this minus e to the. And now what we are going to do is we are going to extract an e to the negative r power over 2 from this whole thing. So negative r power over 2. And then to the 1 90th. And all of this divided by 2i. Yeah, and now what we can do is we can take a look at the complex plane real quick because we can rewrite e to the i power over 2 and e to the negative r power over 2, which is a complex conjugate, um, into just, yeah, basically imaginary units. So in normal case, you have an imaginary number and if it is of this form with a coefficient of 1, then it has a radius of 1, the vector in the complex plane. And if we go pi over 2 upwards, we are going to land exactly at i, meaning e to the r pi over 2 is nothing other than i, which is really cool identity. Now we are going to go the other way around, namely negative pi over 2 decrease, or reds, red or reds, to the down part of the complex plane, leaving us at negative r. Meaning overall, this right here is equal to i to the 1 over 19th minus e to the ne uh, no, minus and then negative i to the 1 over 90. And all of this divided by 2i. And now we can rewrite i a bit further. If we take a look at the pure definition of i, we also know that i squared is, be, is defined as being negative 1. So what we can do is we can take the third on both sides, the square root, giving us that i is nothing other than uh, plus or minus the square root of negative i. And actually it's pretty wrong to say that i is defined as being the square root of negative 1 because this is not true. This is some 
This is some real internet gibberish that you might have picked up before, but the pure definition of i at first and foremost is i squared being equal to negative one. This is where mathematicians want to go at. And by picking the principal branch, you can say, yeah, i is nothing other than positive square root of negative one. But negative the square root of negative one is going to give you the same solution at the end, because those two are not distinguishable in the complex plane. It's just not something that is going to happen. You can't distinguish the solution. It's the same as saying we are going to land at negative one if we either go pi red to the, um, from the right to the left, so positive pi red, or we are going to go pi radians from the other side, so negative pi radians, okay, in the negative direction. Negative one is hence not distinguishable in the complex plane by just saying we are going to go pi um, red to the one side or pi radians from the other side. So this is just a tiny little bit of information. So we are going to plug our definition for i in, giving us overall plus or minus the square root of negative one and then to the 1 90th minus and then we are going to get and our negative sign is going to change our positive or minus around giving us negative or positive the square root of negative 1 to the 1 over 19th and all of this divided by and now we are going to also substitute our i here giving us plus or minus 2 times the square root of negative 1. Now we are just going to go through the two cases and even with this solution you are going to notice at the end that it really doesn't matter which branch for positive or negative um, negative square root of negative one you take or i you take you are going to land at the very same solution. They are not distinguishable so it's going to give the same solution at the end. Let us start off with the positive branch. If we were to choose the positive branch what we are going to get is, okay, on the one hand, we are going to get the square root of negative one to the one over 19th, and this is just the 19th root of square root of negative one in the positive branch. So this is the 19th root of the square root of negative one, and then minus, <clears throat> and now we are going to choose the positive branch here. So going here, we are going to get negative sign front of the square root of negative one, and all of this to the 19th root, we are going to get the 19th root of negative the square root of negative 1. And all of this divided by and taking the positive branch 2 times the square root of negative 1. And here, this is the first solution. Now let us take a look at the second branch. Namely, what happens if we take a look at the negative branch that we got here? I mean, then we are going to get rid of the positive sign here. We are going to get a positive sign here. And down here we are going to get a negative sign. Meaning overall, we can distribute the negative sign into the numerator too, okay, giving us a negative sign here. And now this might seem familiar to you because what we got here is essentially just the square root of negative one to the one over 19th power. This is exactly what we got here. Then we are going to get negative the square root of negative one to the uh, 1 over 19th power. This is exactly what we got here, even with the negative sign in front of the third, and then over 2 times the square root of negative 1, which is going to yield the same solution at the end. And this right here is our solution for the sign of 1 degree. And yeah, this right here is indeed the real thing, even though this <laughs> expression might seem pretty complex due to the negative one. It's the real thing. I mean it when I say this. And here, um, just a tiny little note at the very end before concluding the video. Thing is, um, I tried to simplify this further and you can deal with roots the way, so if you rewrite the uh, branches that we got, so 1 to the 19th power into square roots. Square roots are only defined on the positive branch, basically only on one branch. This is a problem with thirds. So you can't really get rid of the square root of negative 1 down here in the denominator. Maybe I'm going to make a separate video on that be because you actually can if you don't write this as square roots that we got here, but rather with exponents and by taking different branches. But if you were to um, basically expand this fraction by uh, square root of negative one over uh, square root of negative one, you're going to get rid of this part right here, change around basically the, the signs that we got here. But if you then try 
to basically take the square root of negative 1 to the 1 over 19th power, so basically expanding the exponent, you're going to get a problem. You can just um, basically um, use the multiplicative property of the square root um, if you deal with negative numbers. There are a few restrictions there and you're going to run into a contradiction if you try to expand the fractions and then bring the square roots together. This is not going to work and hence I'm probably going to make a separate video on this. But this right here is solution to our problem and I mean this is kind of a funky expression, am I right? And as mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you do enjoy problems like these or maybe you want to learn something about complex analysis, what complex numbers do, why they are defined the way they are, and you should definitely check out today's sponsor Brilliant, who were kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. So imaginary people are pushing my um, ghost blackboard upwards once again um, and these people pushing it upwards are as imaginary as the numbers that we dealt with today. But don't you find it kind of curious? Um, maybe you didn't pick up the pun I said before, but I told you that this right here is the real thing. This is going to be the real number. It's something like 0.074 something. It's, it's very negligible, sign of one degree speaking in numerical terms. But it's going to be the real number. It's not a complex thing, even though we are dealing with square roots of negative numbers and then square root of negative one yet again. The eyes are kind of going to cancel out and this is pretty fascinating to me. And sine and cosine and all the other trick functions have a lot more um, in stock for you than you might think. Bunch of things, theorems that surround them, which are pretty interesting. And Brian is going to give you a nice and intuitive understanding about problems like this. Why they work the way they work and how you can approach problems like this from a nice mathematical standpoint. And I for myself really am an avid user of Brilliant. I'm using it each and every week, showcasing stuff and animations in my class. And it's really a nice and intuitive way to learn about new things that you haven't learned about before. And it's not only mathematics that you can learn there. You can go over there and learn physics, computer sciences, chemistry, even philosophy and about languages, which is pretty amazing. And search engines. This is a really cool course. Definitely check out the search engine course. Um, search engines are pretty cool, pretty damn cool. And they also are kind of mysterious. So yeah, work through the course. This is just a tiny little bit um, what I can recommend to you and try it out for yourself. And what Brilliant mostly shines with are their very cool animations and crafts that they showcase inside of their interactive courses. And nearly 70 interactive courses are over there on their website already and they are expanding their repertoire of new courses each and every month. So if this piqued your interest, if you want to learn more about the things that I taught you today, then definitely make sure to try out the link at the top of the description, brilliant.org slash flamblemass. With it you are going to get free access to a big portion of Brilliant already and the first 200 people to actually make use of the link get 20% of an annual premium subscription which is a really really great deal considering how much content they have on their website already. So definitely make sure and check it out and support the channel as well. I thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe and recommend the channel if you like and if you want to support the channel a bit more um, take your browser window. <laughs> I don't know why I still have this lying around but but I need it for the thing I'm, I'm working on right now. And yeah definitely open up the browser window and go over to Patreon slash Maffable and support the channel way or go to a merch and buy some merchandise and up until next video I wish you guys a double day. <laughs> Never did that before, this is a new one. See ya and please stay safe. Ciao!